Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another OpenShift Commons briefing. I'm Karina Angel, and I am one of the OpenShift product managers, and we're really excited to have John Bohannon from GitHub and John Dumovich here from Red Hat to talk about GitHub Actions and OpenShift. They put a lot of work into this, so really excited to have them here to demo this for us. Um, John, can you go ahead and kick it off? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Karina. So everyone, welcome to this introduction of how to use OpenShift and GitHub Actions. I'm one of the Johns that's going to be presenting today, John B. Uh, we also have a, a John D from Red Hat. Um, so here's how we're going to spend our time together today. We've got about an hour uh, together, starting off at really the ground level. Like you've never heard of GitHub Actions. Of course, you have heard of OpenShift. Um, and we're going to go quickly into demos and then Q&A. So be sure to save up any questions you have for the end. Like I said, I'm John Bohannon. I'm in GitHub Partner Engineering I'm with the background in hardware uh, engineering and then application development. And um, feel free to reach out after the talk um, to talk about partnering, about um, GitHub platform, APIs, GitHub apps, GitHub actions, and so on. And my name is John Dwilich. I'm uh the experience architect for Outer Loop, which is uh, everything in CI CD. So once it lands in Git and gets deployed, I'm uh, responsible for what that experience is uh, for developer tools at OpenShift. And you can see some of my history there. I'm a VM developer, but I always plug small talk because you got to go where the heart is. And uh, so let's get this show going, John. Yeah, that's right. Okay, great. So we'll start with GitHub Actions. If you haven't heard of it, um, it's the automation system that's built into GitHub. So today we're going to mostly concentrate on its use as a CI provider, but you can use GitHub Actions to codify any workflow. Um, just a few points on this slide. It is the number one CI provider on GitHub, which we're really pleased um, about after just a year or two of um, uh, after launch. Um, GitHub Actions comes with a nice secret store for holding things like deploy keys, um, other credentials, and it's community and partner driven. So uh, you get to build on the shoulders of giants like Red Hat. And actually, I like that you don't have to manage any compute to use it. Um, to try it out, you can just head to the Actions tab of any of your repos, get started with a hosted runner, and, and plug away. Um, this is some of the terminology that we're going to be throwing around, so I just wanted to introduce you to it. Um, here on the right, I have a screenshot of what's called a workflow. This is just a YAML file and a special directory that GitHub Actions looks in, in one of your repositories um, that GitHub Actions is, uh, you know, is set up for. And so uh, in, in this workflow, I can write sequential or parallel steps that accomplish a task. In this example workflow, it's just like greeting new con uh, newcomers to the repository with a, a message. But in general, I can trigger this sequence on any event across GitHub, like a pull request or a commit or an issue being opened or even on schedule or manually from a, a button press. So super flexible. Uh, my steps can be verbose and written right into the workflow. They can be Bash or Python scripts, PowerShell scripts, um, or I can pull in a formal unit of work uh, from what's called an action, lowercase a action, uh, with defined inputs and outputs. And that's what Red Hat has, has developed and what we're going to be demoing today. I mentioned that GitHub Actions is powered by the community and by partners like Red Hat. If you're someone who wants to write an action and give back to the community, you can write a JavaScript action, you can write an entire container image and publish either one to GitHub Marketplace so that like 56 million develop developers can potentially discover it. It's a massive audience, a really flexible way to get into open source and to provide an interface to your tooling. Um, what's also really cool is there's some official helper libraries like Actions Toolkit that help with grabbing inputs and producing outputs, making GitHub API calls, et cetera. So uh, if that sounds interesting to you, don't hesitate to reach out to me afterwards and I can help you get started. I'm not gonna steal too much more of John's thunder, but we're happy to announce today that several actually uh, Red Hat Actions are available for free in the Red Hat Actions organization on GitHub. With them, you can easily use Builda, 
Quay, OpenShift, Knative, and a lot more. So uh, Red Hat also maintains a starter workflow that will uh, that you can find when setting up a new workflow in any of your repositories. But in like this is outstanding work that John's team has done, and so who better to demo it than uh, than John himself? Now I'm going to turn it over to him for um, for a, a set of demos, and I can relinquish control of my screen share here. Yeah, so as we do that, thank you very much for that intro. Um, short and sweet. We hope everyone likes our uh, organization. We decided to go uh, and not too many charts and just get to watching uh, <clears throat> me run a demo. So that might be a, that might be a bit of a, <laughs> uh, some fun and games because uh, it's live. We decided not to uh, not to record anything. So uh, first thing I was going to do is um, show you where to look for more information. And so if you're um, interested in knowing what's going on in the Red Hat uh, GitHub Actions team, Everything we do is here in public. Um, you can sort of see uh, what we've done already and released in terms of a, a build a build and those kinds of things. Our, our strategy here is to enable things that you uh, know and love from the OpenShift developer tools ecosystem, things like build a S2I, other things, our Quay repository, those kinds of things, and make them available through uh, GitHub Actions and GitHub Workflows because it's, it's a really easy way to consume uh, a bunch of the stuff and, and reuse a bunch of things you know and love from, from OpenShift. So you can see even things like our early release pod man and those kinds of stuff. Things. So if you're interested in what's going on, uh, just join us here at the Red Hat, uh, sorry, the Red Hat GitHub Actions um, uh, org and uh, ask questions or those kinds of things. And you can see we have quite a bit of stuff, including Knative and a bunch of other things, which I'm about to demo. So the, what we decided to do today is, is a few demos. The first one is uh, quite simple. Uh, I created a simple app, called it Simple App, and I'm going to show you how to enable this using um, GitHub Actions workflows, the default OpenShift workflow, and the um, uh, the uh, developer sandbox. Okay. So basically, what we're going to do is follow these four easy steps, which is uh, easily found in my uh, in my repo. I'm going to get a sandbox which I did earlier, so when I go to the site, I've already prepped it. It doesn't take that long, but I didn't want you guys to wait while I got a sandbox. But a sandbox is there, and I basically, since I logged in earlier, it's uh, it still logged me in. It's going to take me to my OpenShift cluster. So if you want to try OpenShift out, this is a, um, a really great way to, uh, to get started. Okay. Um, then uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take my... Uh, my app, and I'm going to enable it to run this. And basically, uh, I'll take you through a quick, uh, quick view here. I could take show you VS Code, but I'll just do it here. It's a really simple Node app, nothing special. It's just going to uh, serve up some pages. I have pages in my HTML directory, so I'll, sort of, I'll show you what those are in a second. I have a very basic Docker file, which is the pretty standard one. I have a, a little addition here so you can actually show what's going on with the demo. Uh, that it is a live demo and those kinds of things. And let's just get to get to business here. So uh, GitHub is a really nice place to sort of add and get started with workflows. You can set up your own, or you can go down here and take our ready set up uh, OpenShift workflow, which I'm going to do. And so now I'm, I'm ready to, if I start this commit, I'm going to have a workflow, but it's not going to work yet because before you actually uh, read all this stuff. so Maybe developers don't read, but there's a few things you'll have to read. Um, but what we did is we put these little arrows, like you're at the lawyer's office uh, signing documents, on all the things you have to add for this to become uh, executable. So I don't know where your username is, but I know what mine is. But as I, and I don't even know how to spell my name most of the time. And that's my uh, great.io username. And you'll notice as I fill these in, um, I'm, uh, I'm I'm looking at things like a what's this registry password and uh, OpenShift server and OpenShift token. Um, those are things that you wouldn't ran randomly type in the clear here. So uh, John mentioned earlier a secrets thing, a secrets facility to manage your secrets. So you could do something like put a deploy key and other things uh, to, into secure storage at GitHub and then use it for something like a deployment. So that's what we're going to do, and I'll show you how we're going to set those up in a minute. I'm going to send this over to. And the reason I'm doing that 
is when I get a topology viewer, or sorry, when I get a, a new sandbox, I actually get three namespaces, dev, code, and stage. I'm going to be using all these today, but my dev namespace is empty. I, I put some cool future demo stuff here, so you'll see some of that stuff coming up. But right now, I, I chose an empty one. So when I hit the topology viewer, there's nothing running there. So if everything goes to plan and I find my workflow, which I'm right here, uh, this will end up here in Fedumovich Dev. Now, uh, due to an issue that we're fixing today, um, I have to go back to 18.04, but uh, that should be fixed in our uh, in our update to the build. And I think that's it. Uh, I've decided 80.80, I don't want to change the port. I'm not going to change my app name or tag. And I can take you through a quick flyby of this uh, of this workflow. So first things first, it's uh, it's using some features like um, setting out outputs so that I can, uh, when I run this workflow, I'll get a really nice um, output to tell me where to find the app that I just deployed, because I always find that very interesting. Uh, you get a bunch of automation, but you can't find where your app does. If you use this and start the commit uh, and just start running stuff, we'll warn you that your secrets aren't set, so you don't have to debug the thing. It'll tell you what to do. That's, uh, so we tried to make it very easy for someone who wanted to just try out GitHub, GitHub Actions and an OpenShift cluster to just, just go and type in some things. Uh, we're using our build to action, which is going to basically uh, create an app and uh, current tag, which I computed with the SHA-7 of my GitHub um, commit. And then I'm going to push it to my registry, and this is where some of these uh, secrets and uh, things will go. I'm going to log into OpenShift, and then I'm going to create and expose the app as I as I scroll down to the bottom of my, my window. So I'm, I'm not going to wait much longer. I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to do one more thing. First of all, before I do this, and I, I waste your time watching the registry password and token, I'm going to go over here to the settings. So the uh, settings has a place on the right-hand side for secrets. I don't have any secrets. This is going to be a problem here because um, it's my first time enabling it. If I don't enable these secrets, I'm going to have um, the, the workflow won't run. So uh, adding a secret is quite simple. As you can imagine, I can do something that I've done before. And trust me, I will fix this. <laughs> but that's how you would do it from the UI. I'm, uh, I'm uh, UI adverse in some cases. I like to automate. So I actually wrote my own set secret script. And lo and behold, it's going to go. And I'm already logged into OpenShift here. So it's going to query my um, OpenShift credentials and things like that. In this case, getting my login token, and it's getting my server using some OC commands. It's also grabbing my conveniently environment variable Docker password so you guys don't get to see me type it. And if I go back here and I refresh my window, you'll notice that I just set the server token and registry password. Okay, so instead of me typing those manually and pasting all that stuff, like I would have had to uh, type in two passwords. So for demos, that's not the greatest thing to be YouTubing. Um, so I, I did it uh, with, a, with a script. So if I go back here now and I start my commit and I just give her, um, I don't have to wait very long. My OpenShift uh, initial workflow is now running. So what it's going to do is it's just going to build and deploy to OpenShift. And if I deci decide to to watch this run. Um, it doesn't take very long, to be honest. It, uh, it's already done the tag. It's doing a build. It's, uh, it's zipping along quite, quite quickly here. And as soon as the build is done, we'll, we'll see a push to the registry. Um, John, I just wanted to make a, a quick yeah, note sure. while building is um, the, the secret um, setting that you did from the, the GitHub CLI there in your script. Yeah. It's kind of a one way C, right? So, like, we can put secrets into the secret store with the API, yes. but we can't get them out with the API. The only way to get yeah. them out is to run a, a, a workflow like you're doing here. So, it really yeah. is uh, secure storage. Yeah, it is secure. And I'll, uh, I'll show you um, the way I did this. You'll notice that I'm using the GitHub secret setter. Okay, in the, it's the GitHub command line. So it's a convenient thing. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I, I recommend downloading it if you, if you use a lot of GitHub kind of things. You can set your secret, but there is no corresponding get secret. So if you forget it and or don't know what it is, this is not a place to get it back. So as John says, they, it's, a, it's a one way in and then, of course, available to workflows. So um, 
let's go see if this is done. Uh, it's close, but no, not quite cigar. It's pushing to the registry here, so this won't take very long. This is usually about a one minute, 30 second total, depending on how the load is, although it's midday East Coast, so we'll see. Um, and at that point, when we're, when we're done this uh, fine, uh, fine first pass, we'll see a, a, an application running. And it'll be running here in the Jadimovich dev space. So that's the, the first part of the demo. Hopefully, we don't have to wait too much longer. John, did you get a chance to play around with like the GitHub? Oh, there we go. I was going to say yeah, a lot of the features of the CLI, but we sorry, can talk get, about that later. <laughs> sorry, the GitHub what? Um, anyways, this, so this the CLI. So this should be deployed. And lo and behold, there's my app. It's starting, it's not quite running yet. If I click on it, it's container still creating. So it's gonna download the container and run. This doesn't take very long. And as soon as, uh, as, soon as the donut fills, we should, be, uh, we should be ready to show you the app. Now this app is a simple app, which was designed to be a self advertisement for this demo that we're doing today. So it's kind of recursive. So when you run this app, um, you can, uh, um, you can find more about the actions I showed you earlier. If you want to go back to our Red Hat Actions site, you can go to the GitHub Actions site as well. Um, and of course, together we're super awesome. And it tells you how two, four easy steps configure the same thing. And you can then of course link to the simple app, which is where I was doing all the work. So the whole thing is, is quite, uh, uh, quite simple. Now, if I wanted to, and I wanted to fix something like here, and so there, and edit instead of just clicking. I can run this again, and then I'll show you an update later when we're uh, as we go on to the next demo. Okay. You're welcome, whoever. Uh huh. And uh, with that, be happy. And of course, we'll see another build running in in a few minutes. We'll we'll see that running. And I won't make I won't make you wait for that, but you'll see it took about two minutes, and it won't take much longer this time. So the next demo um, I was going to do was something a little more complicated. People ask us a little bit about this, so I'll close these for now. So you don't have to watch all this stuff happen. This will be updated in the background. But the next demo I'm going to show you is um, I earlier today I took our spring pet clinic demo and I did a did a demo release. I didn't update the database, I just did a quick quick demo. So there is a there's no database currently running. I'll show you that little error message. But um, this shows uh, how you could use your spring application and deploy it to to um, to OpenShift. So I'll take you through that one. Uh, it's it's available on our uh, in our Red Hat Actions uh, org. I happen to have a, a fork of it so that I can uh, have my magical set secret script so that I can easily whip through demos. So that's convenient. And um, basically, I was the interesting thing here is there's a few actions I want to show. One is we've decided to make this a, another demo showcase for how to use existing actions. So if you wanted to use a, uh, um, one of these um, plain old Docker builds and push your image, you can peruse your way through here and show exactly how you would do that. In this case, we're actually using build for do, building with a Docker file and basically do a, essentially a build of your image. Um, and if I am interested in S2I, we did a sample workflow there that shows you how to do an S2I build and pick the correct Java and those kinds of things. So if you're really interested in taking your spring application and uh, learning to build it and learning to push it to, uh, to an OpenShift cluster, this is this is a place to look and learn a bunch of stuff uh, about you know how we do it and how we recommend it. Um, the uh, demo, though, I was going to show you that's interesting to me. I'm going to show you what I call using the cloud for my own good deeds. So, for example, um, I'm running on OpenShift, and I have an instance running now here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy a second copy. I'm just going to go and take this. For the OpenShift common stuff.
Oh, did I not change it? Where's my changes? Having having demo demo fatigue here. Something funny going on. All right, that's supposed to change. This is a very weird thing. It is saying no changes to commit. This is not what I expect. <laughs> this is not what I expected today. Does it get ignored or something? It shouldn't be. Uh, given that this is the one I did last night to specifically do this. <laughs> Anyways, demos are fun. So let's go try this the old school way. Find my location for this fine thing. You know, it's just the browser is slow. There we go. All right, let's push this now and not worry about it too much. So the, the browser, or sorry, the VS Code finally determined it was changed. So demo. Uh, so I just did that and pushed it quickly. And you'll notice that because I have three different workflows, they'll all start running at the same time. So I'm going to uh, burn a little bit of my, uh, my GitHub time here. And the one I'm really worried about is this one, or paying attention to. You'll notice it's built in a bunch of different steps. So these uh, first compile step, which is then a, a precursor for the build and push to Quay, and then it'll deploy to OpenShift. So if we go back to our, our demo a little bit, we'll, you'll notice that we've built it based on this, uh, you know, uh, these sep separable steps and the these steps then can be dependent on a previous step using the ID of the step. So you can have that uh, that workflow that we just showed here running as a as a sequence of dependent steps. Okay, so this this doesn't actually shouldn't take that long as well. Um, and when it finally finishes, while we're at it, let's go back to this. This one probably finished, right? The other were super awesome, and so is OpenShift Commons. So that was my previous demo. So we're going to just stop with the simple demo. Uh, you can play around with it if you uh, if you decide to try to, to find uh, find some time to just you know, learn something new if you haven't seen Actions and, and OpenShift together before. So um, click around here to get rid of extra stuff. The right one. So this one's still compiled, and now it's building. Uh, it's going to take this one will take a little bit of time, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to wait a little bit, and I'll show you show you one of the one of the reasons I really do like how I've been able to set up my workflows if for for demos and and for day to day stuff. Um, I've been able to incorporate workflows into just my regular projects and then loop in my my sandbox, and so whenever I I play around, I can always have a running copy of my my application. So this is. This is part of what I would consider leverage the cloud for a developer's use. And so, you know, while CI/CD is typically for, you know, a lot of folks consider it um, prod or pre-prod, something you're going to deploy, I also consider it something that you end up using as part of your day-to-day -day development. If you want to see something a little more realistic as part of what's going to happen when you do uh, finally get ready to uh, to start using a, a real cluster in, in your development and testing. So, um, and when this finally runs, we'll see a, a version of it, hopefully. I just, uh, I just took, oh, am I going to be, uh, that's the Docker build one, there's the S2I, and now the one we actually care about is deploying. So hopefully if we, uh, we can catch it live here, um, Bill's deploying. But the reason this is interesting is we're going to have this one here, which uh, I'm going to close my windows here and make sure I have it all ready to go. But I have this one here, which shows me, oops, I need the wrong one. That's why, that's why demos are great. I have the old one. We would have never seen. Now I have two. So I have this one, which is coming up still. And I have this one, which is up. So this is the demo live one. And if I go back to this viewer, it's starting. And if I, um, go to my logs. I can actually see it's probably still 
bootstrapping a little bit, but we can always find out by uh, clicking here and checking it. And there's the new version. So the reason I, I, I put this in the demo today was, you know, uh, I realized we had a discussion yesterday about demoing CI CD can kind of seem not as exciting, but let's talk about how you would use this. Um, one, here I have my two versions of the app running side by side. So if you don't incorporate, in my view, uh, something like an OpenShift cluster, or if you're developing for Kubernetes, something like a test environment where you can run things like side by side. I can actually then have testers or even just developers go, what did the old one look like? Oh, look. And go to, this is a copy of the new one. Oh, look, that's different. And and I can then run them side by side. Uh, when you do this locally on your local desktop, you, which you can do, you're ending up managing ports and you're ending up um, changing your scripts to have multiple copies. And then they're, you got, you can't run the same copy out of the same directory, you got to check it out multiple times. It's all sorts of stuff you end up doing manually. While here, uh, there's a lot of things that just are kind of a natural way to do it in the cloud. And so I wanted to point that out. And um, uh, if you're considering kind of using some of this stuff, considering incorporating these kind of new ways to validate your applications. And I, I found that GitHub Actions was a really easy way to do this because it's all part of my code base and I can just push and, and, and go. Okay, so that's uh, that's part of the, the spring demo. I don't think we're going to show much else because I did show a live change. And so while I'm at it, I'm going to take you to the third and final demo and, and just to make a few uh, a few points on, on this one as well. So this one is is what's called uh, an application called gratu Gratuitous. It's hard to pronounce because it's a play on Gratuitous Graphics is the name of the application. And what it does is it's 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 designed to show how you can build slightly more ap complex applications. And so uh, this ex this ac this actually existed before. And when I started the GitHub Actions work last fall, we decided to to see see where we could take it and what we could do with it. Uh, this one's interesting. It has three different programming languages for a single service called Go, one for Go, one for Node, and one for Quarkus in Java. It's got a front-end load balancer that I inserted for uh, for convenience, and it's got a, an Nginx for all the HTML stuff. Um, and so in this particular case, um, that's this, this application here. Uh, actually, let me show you the application a little bit. Um, application's actually running, and you can now, you'll probably figure out why it's called Gratuitous because it's using gratuitous graphics. These charts mean almost nothing because they're basically benchmarking the app itself, so it really doesn't. And it just shows you some you know, intergalactic uh, numbers flying by and those kinds of things. Uh, you can play with uh, you know number of requests and stuff for performance and other testing, which we can actually demonstrate lots of interesting things on the cluster like scaling and other things. Um, however, today I'm just going to demonstrate a uh, a change. It's going to be applied dynamically, and how the GitHub Actions uh, that we put together work to to make all of this stuff happen. Um, so I'm going to go down here first. Um, I've been using it already, so I'll show you what uh, I did one this morning. You can probably guess when I show you the last few action runs what I did to set up. That's a hint. Yellow. That's. Uh, Close some of these so that we're not going to get buried in Windows. Um, and get rid of this one probably for now, because I have one here. And as you could probably guess, yellow refers to the color of the Go implementation in the uh, in the cluster, which you can you can also see here. You can see the yellow, but you can see that this is the application. Um, and this is nice because you can demo. Uh, if I decide to go for uh, two pods, you can nice, you can demonstrate that. Eventually, you'll see or sorry, three pods instead of two pods. Yeah, uh, you'll eventually see a, a third slice once it uh, once it scales. So once you see this this fill out, uh, you'll notice that. Uh, hopefully, I can not too like. Anyways, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on this for us uh, uh, while it's changing, and I'm going to go down here. And audience participation time, close a bunch of these windows. Anyone want to pick a color? Anyone want to pick a color? Um, so in this case, just to, um, I'm going to first do the change, and I'm going to take you through how this particular workflow works, and then some of the things we have to do, and, and uh, show you some other features in GitHub that we, we were able to find. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to my Go application, instead of yellow, 
today we're going pink. Uh, Hello, hello. So lo and behold, uh, so there's the three node, uh, sort of the three Go instances I, I earlier scaled up. So if we were uh, if we were running auto scale and other things, you would see this happen automatically when we push it. But that's not what we're doing today. We're just going to show some CI and CD. Um, the action workflow I just uh, or the workflow I just fired off was my commit for pink. Um, and so what's going to happen is this workflow is going to just do a very similar. This is actually the same workflow that we started with the OpenShift a simple app. It's just cookie cutter uh, build multiple containers. And in this case, it's going to build the Go one. And lo and behold, it's going to uh, build and push it. And it's not. It's going to skip some steps. So the skipping of the steps are, are what I was going to show you a little bit. Um, and I was going to show you one more thing or a couple more things. Uh, simple app. I could get lost here in the demo, but let's go here. So while we're doing this, I'm going to do this here so you can watch. Look at that. There's a slice disappearing on you maybe. And look, we've already built and deployed the pink and you can see the yellow is going to disappear as the, as the uh, deployment disappears and then the pinks start to uh, start to get uh, the two deployments. And I'm going to show you how all of that kind of works. So it's it's gratuitous graphics, so you can actually watch something and I can talk to uh, changes and you can actually visually see them without uh, uh, without me going, hey, look, I changed Hello World to Hello World Commons, which was maybe some of the previous demos. Um, but I want to show you a few of the interesting things that we did here, although uh, I did want to point out uh, a, few, a few of the interesting things. One is um, I, uh, I regularly normally have my GitOps repo is separate from my dev repo, but for convenience, I made a mono repo for this demo and I put everything in one. So I put all of the uh, GitOps deployment YAMLs in one spot and I put all of my uh, services in one spot. But 12 factor, normally you would put uh, each service in a separate repo so they have independent life cycles. And then you would have the GitOps repo that actually talks about the manifest and the configuration and all those things uh, with a, with a, uh, backend like or sorry a deployer like Argo CD would then also be used for for taking that. But I put it all into one, and then I wrote this uh, this action to uh, or this workflow to show how that could be done. Uh, the problem when I put it all into one is I was building five images even if none of them needed to be changed. So I added a facility to to compute the changes, which is your basic script using a diff and some grepping. Nothing spectacular. You can see it. The there is a Git. Uh, a bunch of GitHub actions that do properly detect changes. So you could write an incremental builder. Um, I, I didn't do this because I also use this to incrementally build locally. And uh, I, I was using this script already to go and diff on my local machine and I use the same script on GitHub. Um, if I was doing just a GitHub diff, I would use the GitHub action. And I can actually show you where that was. Uh, we, have, we use it in a bunch of our Red Hat actions as, um, as a way to determine uh, what to build um, for our uh, for our demos and for our actions. Um, and so I selectively, this is a feature, I can selectively run steps. So when, uh, so just to, to map it back to what you saw earlier, you'll see some of these steps have a little didn't run. They didn't run because they didn't need to run. I had a conditional, conditional step uh, or conditional uh, uh, flow here. So I could just build a bunch of them. Now, the interesting thing here for this demo, other than, you know, there's a bunch of things, a lot of complicated things going on, is after I, I, I patch my images to, um, um, to, to, to have the new deployment. Um, so that's, uh, that's unfortunately this interestingly long thing. <laughs> uh, actually, no, that's not the interesting long thing. There's a patched this, this interesting long thing that will patch the images with their new names. So um, so basically, this is an all-in-one script. So I, I bring this up so you can go and, and look at it and, and figure things out. But at the very end, I interact with GitHub itself using a, an action that I, I found, a, a, a fellow named Peter Evans, who does quite a few interesting GitHub actions. And after my pink was deployed, um, which is, should be here. What's happened? Well, the previous one was yellow and the current one was pink. Well, how does that actually work in a, in a GitOps workflow? I need to change my repo. 
So what I did is incorporate into my workflow a fairly basic, it's not super fancy, um, action to send myself a pull request. And that action will then, of course, send one. And the, uh, let me see where I am here. So there's, there's the commit. And you can see that I patched the old image to the new image. And then if I'm happy with that deployment, now if I was doing A, B, roll forward, all those kinds of things, there should be some automation. But I'm showing this demo manually. If I'm happy with this, um, I can just take it. And uh, since it's all ready to go, I can merge it. Happy, happiness is me, and um, and I can delete the branch too because I don't really need it. And lo and behold, my app is now going to match. And if I go back to my local, local deployment, I should see the old one here, but if I pull, pull back to get myself in sync, I see it changed. Hopefully, you, sp you spotted that to the new tag. So this is me running a full end-to-end -end CI/CD out of GitHub, um, just for myself, uh, with a full GitOps kind of workflow to determine uh, what gets released, and I can go back to any previous release, and 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 it's all tagged through these these pull requests. So uh, just the the power of the cloud is is really the message. You're using CI/CD as part of your everyday workflow, just because it's it gives you a lot of interesting kinds of things you can uh, you can do. Um, so uh, those are the demos we are going to basically run through today. And I was going to just end with a couple of things and then go back to some charts. And then uh, we can go to the questions. And we'll have plenty of time, I hope. If there's any good questions, we'll see. Um, I wanted to I wanted to point out uh, stuff we haven't demoed and then we'll talk about it a little bit today. Um, we build also, if you want to run, for OpenShift users who may want to run a, an action or workflow on their own self-hosted cluster, on their own cluster, they can install these pre-built images. There's an there's a there's an installer here um, for this. There's a OpenShift Action Runner chart. So this chart here uh, is a Helm chart, which will allow you to install and run any runner on your local cluster. So if you want to do some of this stuff, and for some reason you feel uh, it's, uh, it's something you'd like to run on your cluster. Now, in some cases, maybe you don't want to do the build on your cluster, but you might want to do some testing on your cluster, which is already pre-configured. This is a perfect way for you to get GitHub to launch and execute on your cluster. The nice part about this particular case, you could, you can, you can also, uh, the, the nice part about this particular case is I can also use this with other OpenShift uh, or Red Hat tools like uh, Code Ready Containers, which runs on my desktop. It'll wait for work from GitHub and I could be doing things like running testing and other things. So if you're interested in this workflow, uh, I, I encourage you to go and look at the runner chart. There is a, there's some samples that will show you how to do this. But basically, um, you can install a, a runner. It will pull back to, to GitHub. And it will show you, um, uh, show you or it will take work whenever you, when you run them on, on GitHub. There is, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty nice. And if you want your cluster as part of your, your own personal cluster or something as part of your, your dev cycle, that's a, a great way to do it. Um, and, it's, and it works with things like our CRC on the desktop. Uh, the other stuff I wanted to point out, if you, we didn't demo today, um, but is, is a great way to learn. Uh, we have Knative integration. And so we, we've done some action. So what we're trying to do is ensure that there is a, uh, a standard, consistent way for you to use GitHub Actions with OpenShift. Very, uh, very natural set of, and we try to we try to make consistent namespaces, consistent uh, secret names, all of those things. So once you've learned the 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 stuff, for example, from the starter workflow, you can use that knowledge later. Okay, so I encourage you to go and 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 see some of this stuff. Um, you may not be able to use the K Native with the sandbox yet. Um, but if you have a, a cluster that, uh, that can run OpenShift uh, serverless, you should be able to uh, um, you should be able to, to try this one out and get yourself get yourself going. Uh, the Spring Pet Clinic, of course, this is where I forked mine uh, to to show you the demo today. I didn't really do a lot of work other than than you know forking it and filling in some secrets in a little script. Uh, a bunch of direct actions for talking to OpenShift. Um, and there's one more I really want to talk about here as soon as I scrolled past it um, that put some a little bit of thought into it. This one here. So GitHub uh, comes with a 
large set of pre-installed binaries in their uh, GitHub hosted um, runners, which are really convenient because you don't have to install them. It's instant, it's fast. Uh, you can just use them. So that's really great. Now, uh, for anyone here who's a DevOps engineer from way back or managing builds or uh, has been burned, essentially by changing uh, versions of tools underneath them, who installed this new compiler is the, is the screaming you hear from the build engineer, someone responsible. And so what we did is we wanted to ensure that there was a way for you to get what I call a consistent lineup of all of the supported OpenShift CLI tools into a GitHub Actions workflow. And so this here is typically going to be the very first thing you put in your build scripts or tools, because then you can control exact versions, and you could say latest if you like, but the exact versions of all of these command lines. So that if your uh, build is sensitive to versions, or if you're tied to an older version of OpenShift or a different version, and you need the exact, exact CLI lineup, this is a way to do it, and it's a standard way. You don't have to go around, figure out where the downloads are. So it's a really convenient way because I, I have this myself where I need version X, and I just don't know where to find it. I go to rummage around the mirrors and, and those kinds of things to find it. Um, in theory, you know, in the real world, uh, or in, in an ideal world, you wouldn't need to be version dependent, but in the real world, uh, you're often tied to version. So we have this model where you can install the correct lineup, and we optimize. So if GitHub has the correct binary that you're asking for, it's a no-op, very instant, but if it ever, if it, if it ever moves and you, were to, uh, and you wanted to um, ensure that your version's to that version, then you can actually use this. And you can, you can find uh, uh, one or more command lines, and, and this is our strategy for ensuring that any command line that you can get from Red Hat through, uh, for example, the command line tool installer, um, which, which comes with every OpenShift, you can also incorporate into uh, your GitHub workflow. So we don't want you to kind of be rummaging around here and doing manual stuff. We want to make your day-to-day -day a lot easier. Um, and that's, that's what we've done for that. I want to make sure I mention that because it, it, it seems like a small thing, but it's saved my butt a few times where um, I, I just, uh, you know, a new, a new release of something came out and, and I wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't prepared for it, so I had to I had to go back. Um, so, uh, with think with with that, I think we're we're done except for this. Cool. So I did want to go through this um, just quickly, and then questions. I think we did our timing just right, John. Um, so this is our roadmap with vague, near term, mid term, long term meanings. Uh, I, I do want to point out if you've uh, watched me scroll through all the stuff, we've pretty much completed everything in the near term and we're going to move on to the midterm. Our near term goals were basic authentication, deployment, CLI installer, which I just showed you, CLIs that are specific to build, Knative, and, and all in the marketplace. So very, very much a, a bootstrapping. Uh, we have a single user runner, which you can install via that Helm chart. So that's there. And we're working still uh, this is coming at some point fairly soon, on an, a single user bot that you can install on your OpenShift cluster, and it will manage those secrets for you that I was, so instead of you having to type in, you know, my version of this, uh, which queries the server I'm going to and queries the server for the token, it's going to do it for you and you won't have to bother with all that. So we're trying to make that user experience, oops, very simple. Uh, the midterm is around, uh, you know, being able to build on, um, build things that require entitlements, uh, testing, uh, better uh, better scanning and other um, uh, security DevSecOps kind of integrations, VPN to private clusters is something we're exploring, and then a bunch of other things where you can re-leverage things like Tekton, which might be important if you're an OpenShift user, uh, with, um, with GitHub, uh, as we call that a bit of our shift left, because if you're already running it with a pre-built task on your cluster, you might want to also give it a go on GitHub. Uh, looking at operators to make it a lot easier to manage things like the runners, because you might have lots of them, um, and uh, integration, a little more integration with the sandbox. Right now, you'll notice, again, I had to uh, um, manage these secrets and other things. We wouldn't mind making it a lot, a lot smoother experience to get a sandbox and work with GitHub. So hopefully, in a future demo, you won't watch me click around a lot. You'll see just smooth um, you know, getting stuff built and deployed. And then, of course, in the longer term, um, you know, 
execution on pipelines, on OpenShift pipelines. So if you want to want to actually leverage uh, your OpenShift cluster, uh, be configured for security or be configured for larger things, uh, larger heaps, larger memory than might be available on GitHub. Although GitHub is very generous with their seven gig, that's pretty much big enough for anything. However, um, there are things that do exceed that. Uh, and then some other UI things. So if you're building on GitHub, maybe uh, the status in the OpenShift console that's attached to that app will be up to date and, and consistent. And then a few other, uh, another few other things for, uh, for uh, integration to our GitOps, which is coming out uh, this year, um, which is of course naturally something you would layer on top of Git. So that's it. And now, John, you won't, I don't know where who put concerns in here, but I'm, I left it. <laughs> concerns? Anyone? anyone concerned about the direction this is, we've taken? Yeah. This is questions I like, comments I like. I'll take concerns, but it was, uh, I think, I, about I used to just to direct them to your personal email, but I took that out too. So, yeah. <laughs> well, there. No. Uh, so, uh, so that's um, that's it for us. I think in terms of all the things we wanted to show and sort of things to bring up. So we'll take questions, and I haven't looked at the chat or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, to see if there's any, but Serena's gonna, or sorry, uh, uh, gonna <laughs> Serena. wrong, 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 Ina. Sorry. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing okay. as well, unless. Uh, yeah. So I can, you know so I can see you all. Thanks. Uh, I will ask you probably to put that roadmap slide back up um, in just a minute. Uh, so, quick question: Is it currently possible to submit requests, or are these actions still in the early stage? And how? My follow-up question to that is how and where do you send the request to and feedback? Um, so I guess you're asking, this, I'm gonna interpret that as two questions. One, request to GitHub to extend GitHub actions in some way, and then request to Red Hat to extend our actions uh, in some other way, is that correct? And I'll answer, yes. I'll answer the Red Hat one, which is you go to the Red Hat actions org uh, where, where the link is uh, that I've been demoing, and uh, create a create a new issue of, of what you want as a feature, and we'll prioritize it in our planning, which is done uh, um, in a project on that uh, on that uh, organization. So if you have a feature request or you want to uh, anything um, that you you want to talk to us about, we're, we hang out on GitHub as you'd expect. And yeah, so I just uh, followed up with a. Um, a pointer to the contact support, get, uh, GitHub support link for any like GitHub wide feature requests. That's the central funnel for, for all requests like that. Nice. And for those of you watching and don't see the chat, it's support.github.com slash contact. And that'll go straight to John. No, not really. Okay, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you his email too. Uh, another question: Could you please describe the limitations for GitHub Actions with OpenShift um, when you're running behind the company's firewalls? Great question. Yeah. So the issue um, is that uh, if your cluster is not reachable, which is essentially your problem, then some of the actions that directly log in, like OC login and uh, OC. Uh, uh, it, any command line that talks to the cluster needs needs reachability. So um, you noticed in the roadmap there was a VPN feature. We're looking at what it would take for you to enable a tunnel from GitHub back to your private cluster, but only for you, which would then it then let you treat your private clusters just like um, just like something on the public internet, but it wouldn't go through. Uh, you know, that doesn't need a public DNS. The um, so that's the that's the sort of the the, da the downside of having sort of stuff behind the firewall. There's two use cases that we've seen. However, one is a lot of customers who have GitHub Enterprise. Uh, they're on the correct side of the firewall when they run actions or when they if they're having actions running a GitHub Enterprise. So they're on the correct side of the firewall. So a bunch of this stuff will still work in uh, in an enterprise kind of context. Um, and then the, the last point I wanna make is things like the GitHub runners are a, a outward connect model. The runner runs and talks to GitHub and waits for work. So you can still use, for example, on your desktop a code ready containers receiving work on a private cluster or any private cluster receiving work from GitHub because the model is a pull model, not a, a, not a push to the uh, public DNS. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And and in the chat, there's a proxy server model, but we're still investigating what the best way to do it is because 
as you could imagine, security is a problem, concern uh, for for a lot of folks who want, don't want to just punch through their their, their firewalls. Yeah, I'm glad you posted the the link to the proxy server. And question is, I know you're looking into it, uh, John D. But yeah. is does it work right now? Have you tested that, or at least tried it out um, using the proxy server? I'm sure there's some people that have already tried it. That's okay. uh, we we have. Uh, we haven't, uh, but the link that's referenced is talking about outward proxy. So a lot of enterprises need a, a proxy server configured for outward connections. And so if you want your runner to talk to a proxy server to get out, that's what this looks like. I, I'm talking about from GitHub itself, how it would, um, how it would talk to an arbitrary behind the firewall server, um, which is a, a, the other direction. Thanks. Because I know we'll have, that's going to be one of the top questions, right, that you always get asked. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the bigger bigger problems. Uh, we see it for even things like webhooks, for example. So you see redirectors to go from, uh, and then, of course, you have SSL issues because you don't want, uh, GitHub needs a secure connection to post webhooks. It's the same essential problem of having a public service talk to private uh, behind the firewall uh, networks. Um, I think. Um, we'll look at it at, from the GitHub context initially, and, but I think there should be a, a better way in general to allow that, um, especially uh, with ops control to make sure that all the security issues are, are taken care of. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it's, out. yeah. Yeah, go ahead, John. No, I, I, I was I was just going to ramble on a little bit um, because, you know, about the ops folks who really need to know all the holes punched in their firewalls to get to essentially what they consider are developer use cases, which may not be a high priority. <laughs> um, so you yeah. got to be, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know we have a mixed audience today, so I just wanted to um, point out that there are a few different variants of GitHub. There's like the github.com um, version that's free to use. There, there are different paid um, tiers of that as well, including a, an enterprise cloud. Um, and GitHub Actions is available on all those and also the on-premise GitHub uh, enterprise server. So um, it's worth trying out in that context too. Yeah, so yeah. So if you, if you have GitHub Enterprise with Actions and you want to try our Actions, um, one of the things that we uh, were trying to ensure is that we work transparently with um, Enterprise and GitHub.com, the public SaaS. The only real difference is the API endpoints. So you have to, uh, you know, sorry, the only, the major difference is the API endpoints. So everything should work as long as you're considerate of the environment that's it's being run in. So if there are issues, you try it out and you find issues, uh, uh, call me, <laughs> and we'll and we'll, we'll we'll figure out what the real how to how to fix that quickly or or what the what the fix has to be. Um, exactly. Because we do intend it to be a, 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 like one, uh, right once and run pretty much anywhere you have the environment set up. Yeah. And there's a detail there that if you're on GitHub Enterprise Server, you're not going to be able to reach out to public actions like Red Hat's um, out of the box. Uh, you need to enable a feature called GitHub Connect, and you can um, Google the documentation for that. I can't do two things at once, or I, I would do that too. But GitHub Connect will allow you to say, you know, Red Hat Actions slash, uh, you know, OC installer and um, uh, and use those. Thank you. Um, John B., can you talk about GitHub Apps just really quick? I know you highlighted it in, in the... Yeah, totally. Um, it's funny you mentioned that. I just wrote an introductory article on... Uh, on, on Dev2 um, yesterday, um, Get, GitHub Apps and GitHub Actions work together well. Um, they're both programmatic ways to, you know, integrate and interact uh, with with GitHub APIs. Um, if it helps clarify, GitHub Actions is itself built using GitHub Apps. So GitHub Apps came first around 2018. It's a way to scope um, and uh, control API requests. To, to GitHub. But if you have any further questions, please let me know. Yeah, so, so I, I, can, I can comment a little bit on that uh, from our roadmap perspective. So GitHub app um, has a very nice uh, way to give you fine-grained control uh, access to your GitHub repository or organizations. You could have an app that says, I just need repo access or I just need access to workflows. So it's essentially a way to create bots for yourself to do things autonomously. And mm -hmm. so 
Um, and the install experience is quite easy. I have a prototype, but I think we're going to have to save that for another another excellent teaser for the next one. Uh, yeah. But essentially, you uh, you off into GitHub, install the app, and all of a sudden you have uh, another assistant over your shoulder doing things automatically for you. And in our case, the first use cases would be once you install this, we'd like it to manage your workflows and the secrets and all the things we showed you in the GitHub actions from the Red Hat team uh, for you so that you're not looking around and go, oh, what did I forget to set? Because uh, you should have seen these demos. In the early days, I'd forget to set the secret and then have to do it twice and you'd watch me debug for a while. So automate all of that so the experience is very smooth in using the two together, but only with the rights that are needed, as opposed to a full OAuth token, which is pretending to be you and only you, which is, has unlimited power. So it's a really nice way to have scoped access and it does yeah. a lot of autom automation and bot like things so you could have one for secrets management you could have one for auto comment and closing issues and other things that are good policy things exactly. um, it's very power very powerful and uh, the first one we're doing is is running in your own workspaces your own namespace and eventually when that becomes uh, something that's a little more robust we'll we'll look at making it something that works across the orgs exactly and github apps also have their own identity so they they don't yeah. like consume a seat in your um you know your enterprise instance and um, they can also take, or they can be permitted to act as the user. So you can send a GitHub app user through the OAuth flow and do the normal um, OAuth dance and uh, and do something that pretty much everybody is familiar with. Um, but it's a flexible model. I encourage you to check it out. Right. OVA uh, templates. Hmm. Uh, no. OVA. No. So no, the the image is not available. Uh, sorry. Um, Karina, you should probably. I'm uh, you're welcome to read it out. And just for the for those that don't see the question, it might be the wrong form. But does GitHub have any plans for delivering OVA templates for the GitHub runners? I can't speak to the plans. the The build scripts that we use to to make those VMs are available. Um, I just sent a link to the virtual environment action slash virtual environments repository where all that happens. Um, but I don't think the, the image itself is available right now. I want to say it's for licensing reasons of the software that's included, but I'm not sure on that. Maybe we'll, we'll find out for the follow-up. And with one minute to go, do either of you have any closing thoughts? Really great demos. Just want to say that again. You know, others have also commented on how great the demos are. So thank you. Well, it's nice to hear. We uh, we actually met yesterday to talk about the kinds of messaging and demo kind of stuff. So it was uh, it's good to hear that the uh, the discussion was useful for everybody. And um, but yeah, if you see us on uh, see us on uh, our our uh, Red Hat Actions uh, GitHub. So if you need to know things or want to know things, if uh, you can always, of course, I, I work at Red Hat. So if you're from Red Hat, you just you can you can find me. I'm sure, but I'm pretty uh, pretty easily accessible. So anything you, you need to know, and I can certainly find uh, uh, find out stuff for you if you if you want. So, um, but thanks for the uh, feedback on the on the demos. We're trying to make them kind of useful and not just watch me run something. So. Yeah, I think you did a great job, John. Thanks for all the teamwork. Looking forward to the, the partnership. And I'm looking uh, forward to the next session. Uh -huh. We'll line that one up. And thank you, everybody else, for joining us today. For and this will be posted to the OpenShift YouTube, so look for it there. And thanks again for joining us. And Chris, can you see us out?